This presentation is about cascading our media servers or our SFU called GT Video Bridge, and we do this through a protocol that we named Octo. First, the problem that we're trying to solve, the usual way that people do, uh, people distribute uh, video conferencing services geographically is that they deploy servers in a bunch of different places throughout the world. Then when a conference starts, initially they select one server and that's where the conference is hosted. So one problem with this uh, that we see happening in our system is, I would just use an example here. Uh, and I'm using red dots to indicate servers and green dots for users. So a user from somewhere in Australia starts a conference. Um, a server in Sydney is chosen. And then a bunch of people from the US join the conference. And the server is in Australia. And this is obviously inefficient. Um, there are two problems with this. Uh, one problem is that the connection from the people from the US to Australia is probably not uh, is probably worse than their connection to a local server. So the round trip time between the participants in the US and the server in Australia is longer. The other problem is that the end-to-end -end connection from someone in the US to another one in the US goes to Australia, which is really inefficient. And that's what we're trying to solve with cascaded bridges. So in this example, what would happen if we were able to cascade bridges is we would select um, multiple bridges and have everyone connect to a local bridge. So this conference would instead be connected like this. There's going to be one server in the US and one server in Australia. And those two servers have to talk to each other and exchange um, the audio and video streams. And we do this through this protocol that we call Docto. So this solves those two problems that I described. If you look at two participants in the US, end-to-end, um, -end, they have to go through the US server, but they don't have to go to Australia and back. And the other problem, the connection to the server itself is also quicker. Um, so it's probably a better link. And most notably, the round trip time is shorter, which means that stream repair mechanisms, such as retransmission, uh, packet retransmissions can happen much more quickly. Um, this is, in a nutshell, what bridge cascading does. And next, I'll go on to describe how we did it in our system. Oh, and just to generalize, the, we don't necessarily need just two servers. Uh, we can add more than two. And the way we connect them is in a full mesh of servers. Uh, that's what we have right now. We have plans for other um, topologies that might that are going to scale even better than this. So our usual architecture uses shards. This is an example of a single shard. It has one instance of Gcofo, our signaling server, and two instances of our GT Video Bridge media server. Um, this is a set of three servers that um, live in in this example, in the US East 1 region of Amazon. And this particular GCOFO instance can only choose between those two bridges. Um, in order to allow cascading, we modified this so that the bridges from all of our shards connect to all GCOFO instances. This way, GCOFO just has access to a pool of GT Video Bridge instances. The way that selecting a bridge for a specific participant works is the simplest possible. Uh, we look at the user's region. This is right now based on um, latency-based routing from Amazon's Route 53. Uh, but we are working on evaluating how well this works and potentially using another solution. So if Gcofo has a video bridge instance in the same region, it's going to use that. Otherwise, it's going to use one of the existing bridges in the conference uh, based on load. And of course, if more than one bridge is available in this region, um, 
the selection is going to be based on load. So the least loaded bridge is going to be this. Um, this, this selection logic and maintaining the Colibri sessions is all in Jikofo. So there is no signaling going between one bridge and another bridge. All the signaling is from Jikofo to a bridge. So we still have one central signaling server for the conference, and that controls all the bridges. And this is implemented as an extension of the Calibri protocol that we use um, to control GC video bridge. Um, on the media level, a single video bridge instance has a certain set of local participants. So these are clients connected to this bridge directly. Uh, I'm going to use the, the bridge on the left here as an example. So it has two local clients. And then it is connected via Octo to two more bridges, and each of them has one uh, client connected to them. So on the Calibri protocol level, this looks like a single Octo channel that has two targets. One target is this top right bridge um, in Sydney, and this, and the second target is this bottom right bridge in Europe. So this is purely for media. It's uh, it here is where the Octo protocol comes in. Uh, it's really a simple fixed header uh, that we add to UDP packets, and I'll show the format in a minute. But it's a lightweight format with no state. So all the state needed comes from Jikofo to each bridge via signaling. Um, so it supports RTP as well as a custom format for data channel messages. Um, the way we do simulcast is simple. Um, we just for Octo, we forward all the streams to all bridges. So as far as uh, the top right bridge is concerned, it sees a set of simulcast streams coming. Uh, it just so happens that they're not coming directly from a remote client, but they pass through a bridge. Uh, this means that the traffic between the bridges, that all the high quality streams are transported to all bridges, which might not be ideal, and it's something that we're going to be looking at in the future. Um, for simulcast receivers, the logic is uh, the same as it is today. So, so this is the Octo header that we add to RTP packets and um, other UDP packets that we use for data channels, for example. It's a fixed size, eight byte header. Uh, most notably, it has a conference ID, which identifies the conference. Uh, this allows us to have uh, more than one Octo conference going on between two bridges. Um, we have a couple of flags. Um, right now, we only use the M, the M field, which specifies a media type, so whether this is audio, video, or a data channel message. Um, so today we prepend this to UDP packets. In the future, we might turn this into an RTP header extension. Um, one more thing about, about the security of the protocol. Right now, we guarantee on the network layer that communication between the bridges is secure. However, we realize that that might not always be possible, and even if it's possible, it's harder to do. Therefore, we'll be working on adding um, SRTP in some form so that we don't need to rely on a secure network between the bridges. So that's about it for Octo. Um, actually, one more thing. Uh, some of these fields are designed with the idea to reduce signaling. So today, every bridge knows about all of the endpoints via signaling, which is not strictly necessary. It, if we add uh, an endpoint identifier to the actual media packets, we can avoid that part of signaling. Uh, same with simulcast layers. 
Um, and that's something that we'll be working on in the future, reducing the signaling and moving more of this in band. So this is currently deployed on Mi Jitsi. Um, we have six regions, two in Europe, two in the US, uh, two in uh, Asia Pacific. And you can see whether uh, you're currently using this by scrolling over the little GSM bars in the conference. If you do it for your loco uh, thumbnail, you're going to see a server count. And if you click on show more, you're going to see the region where you're connected to. Um, if you hover on the GSM bars on a remote participant, you're going to see the region that they're connected to. Right now on me, Jitsi, this is enabled uh, as an A-B test with probability 50%. So you might not always see it work. We're going to release it in the next couple of weeks, um, always on. Um, and just as an example, in this conference, we have 16 people. And right now, we have four servers. If I scroll around, I can find out where the servers are. I see US East, Europe Central, um, Asia Southeast, and there must be one more somewhere. So that's it. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, let me know.